Let's go on a bit of a journey. Let us go back to a time when things were a little more simple. It was the year 2015 and I was standing outside of a gymnasium drinking some water when I was approached by a young man asking me if my voice was free. This young man was referring to the book written by Kristen Linkletter entitled Freeing the Natural Voice. I would highly recommend this, but I never read it. We talked about a few other things, but with it being class time and all, couldn't talk about much else. Little did I know that this young man was someone pretty special. His name? Mantar Bandle. For anyone that knows Mantar, he's a pretty special dude. Not only is he incredibly outgoing and charismatic, he's also a pretty rad and nice dude. But it wasn't just me who thought this. Getting a start in the radio program at BCIT, Mantar has certainly come a long way. You can catch Mantar every Saturday night on Omni TV doing some hockey commentary and play-by-play. -play. And with his busy schedule, he still managed to find 15 minutes for an interview. Here is my interview with Hockey Night in Punjabi's Mantar Bandal. You're, You're listening, listening to the Block E Podcast. Hi, my name is Mantar Bandal. I work currently for Hockey Night in Canada in Punjabi as a play-by-play -play guy and an analyst. Uh, in the past, I've worked for the Merit Centennials. Uh, they're a BCHL team playing at a Merit. Did play-by-play -play for them, worked at Q101 as a host in Merit. I uh, worked for the North Vancouver Wolfpack. I worked at Evolution 1079, which is BCIT's campus station, uh, as a producer. Out of the ones I worked in the past, uh, I'd probably say the Centennials gig was pretty dope. Puck taken away by the Centennials. A chance for them the other way. Mike Regish down the right side moves in. Regish hits the trailer man. Buckley a shot. Scores! Tyrell Buckley! The Centennials have forced the game seven! Tyrell Buckley! We're going to game seven, baby! Monday night in Penticton! A 7 p.m. puck drop! Tyrell Buckley! Puts a top glove on Mount Robson! The Sets win! The Sets win! The Centennials win! Tyrell Buckley! 10 minutes and 23 seconds in overtime! Tyrell Buckley! Oh my goodness! The Centennials win! The Centennials win! Do you believe? Do you believe? Because, like, I got to travel with the team. So we went to, like, you know, like, Trail, Vernon, Salmon Arm. And it was really cool because, like, Canadian winners, you don't really get to experience them on the lower mainland. Like, minus five is probably the coldest it ever gets, and that's not even that cold. Like, in Merritt, it was minus 40 and, like, snow everywhere up to your waist. We got to see, like, moose, horses, like, wild animals. Like, we were... Going the trail one time, and we're going down our highway, which is Highway 3, to get the trail. We're, like, about an hour out of trail at this point. We're going down this huge hill, and we got to stop. we got to slam our brakes on because there's four freaking mooses or meese or moose, whatever, crossing the road. And they're just, like, staring at us. And, like, we could be stopped because if we had hit them, they would have destroyed our bus because those things are huge. I would have never seen that in the lower mainland. So that was kind of cool. Um, I think the travel was a pretty cool aspect and merit, so I'd have to go with that one. It's kind of funny how I landed that gig because uh, I was unemployed, so I came back to the Lower Mainland in April. Um, I had a couple of prospects lined up, all of them didn't pan out, so I was kind of like dejected. And one day I'm playing with my buddy Eric. We're just playing Wii Baseball because I'm bored out of my mind. It's like a June summer day. And uh, so, yeah, we're just playing, and I get a Facebook message from Bupinder Hundle, and he, I know who the guy is, I, I'd met him in the past. And I knew that he worked for Hockey Night in Canada in Punjabi. So I was like, okay. It was just two messages. One message said, call me, all lowercase, no periods. And the other message had a phone number. I was like, oh, okay. So I call him and I'm like, hey, Bupinder, like, what's going on? Like, what's up? And he's like, hey, like, why haven't you called me? I was like, uh, uh I don't know how to answer that. Like, uh, what do you mean? He's like, you like play by play? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you have a job? No. Then why haven't you called me? I was like, oh. So he kind of put me on the spot right away. So I was like, what the hell do I say? So I was like, ah, uh, never really thought about it. And so he was like, okay, fair enough. But we're looking to expand our broadcast because at that point they weren't doing intermissions. Like the Hockey Night in Canada Punjabi uh, team would call the game, the first period, second period, third period, do post game and pregame, but didn't do intermissions. And so there was a proposal that they wanted to do that, but they needed more people. So Bupinder, Bupinder broke that down for me over the phone. He's like, there might be an opportunity for you to join we need more people. I, 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 we knew about you in Merit. We followed your progress. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, the, I'm thinking, like, is this like a joke or something? Like, what the heck is happening right now? And he's like, do you want the job? I was like, 
uh, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> and so I was like, this isn't a joke or anything, right? He's like, no, no, no. I'm like, wow. So we met up for coffee a couple times. Um, he kind of went into detail and broke it down how it would work. And now I'm working on TV. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Well, they couldn't really leave it. Monteaga, Marcus Granlin, Daniel Sedin, Granlin, Monteaga, Granlin, Monteaga, they got the goal! Brock Besser! Don't act Vancouver! Power play goal! General Prince Charming, suddenly they have Vancouver, the which Brock Besser, they got the goal! The Canucks, cut the lead! I think the biggest difference uh, would be just kind of like what you have to say on TV. Like, I think working in radio was good going into TV because, like, I think a lot of people that get into TV without having any other performance experience are kind of like really uptight and just don't want to say too much. Whereas, like, on radio, you're free to do whatever you want. You can be open, you can be opinionated. So, I had already been way past that. So, I was at that point where I could be open. So I think the biggest difference going into TV was like, oh, okay, people can see me now. I can't really kick my feet up on the desk and eat a slice of pizza while I'm talking, right? So, uh, yeah, posture-wise, uh, I, I watched a lot of videos on posture, um, how to talk with your mouth and not with your throat. So what that means is like being able to talk where your mouth actually moves because on, on radio, like, it doesn't really matter. I used to motor mouth and my mouth barely moved. It was all my throat doing all the work. So on TV, you want to make sure you're clear and concise um, and using your hands too. So on TV, it's important to like, kind of use your hands and kind of really use a lot of different tricks. If you're going to say something important, just so you know, you lean in and do things like that, right? So I think posture was a big one and just like the content is huge moving to tv growing up honestly like i played every single sport you can imagine in canada i played hockey i played baseball I played football I played rugby I played basketball soccer everything and i think what made hockey so appealing for me is because that was my passion every other sport was like this is something i could try out seems cool my dad introduced me to hockey when i was 10 so by Canadian standard, that's pretty late. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was 10 years old. We were watching a Canucks game one day. This is back in 2005 when they had like Bertuzzi. Moves all the way back to the blue line. Leads the puck there. It's intercepted. Here's a breakaway. Todd Bertuzzi moving in on Joseph. Bertuzzi scores! Look out, there's a freight train on the loose, baby! Naslin. Marcus Naslin against Curtis Joseph. Over the Toronto line. In on Joseph. Naslin. Deep scores! Olin. Here's a race for a loose puck. Alex Tagay. Olin is back. Oh, what a hit! Holy smokes! Jovanovski. Dead margin. Jovanovski. Square off in the Colorado zone. Oh, Morrison. Here's Morrison at center. Carrying over the Colorado line. Morrison leads for Linden on the left wing. Linden stops, goes rink wide. Sopo, right point. Throws the puck on goal. Morrison scores! Brendan Morrison in overtime, and the Canucks win 2 1. They had Alex all the net, and I was just so fascinated. I'm like, wow, this is insane. Like, this is so cool. And I was just like, I just fell in love right away with the game. And so that was in 2005. And I kind of was like, I think I want to play hockey. So I convinced my parents to put me in hockey. And of course, I wanted to play goalie, which is the most expensive position. Um, but they put me in, uh, took skating lessons because you had to be like a level two skater to, to, to join hockey. So, um, yeah, I just I, I loved the game. I just loved hockey. Everything else is kind of more of like a hobby, whereas hockey was kind of my passion. And I'm really fortunate to be where I am today. I think watching wise, obviously, the 2010 Olympics and the 2011 Stanley Cup run for the Vancouver Canucks is kind of like really like this is this is it. You know, what I mean, like 2010, those Olympics were so special being in Vancouver, uh, Canada winning, obviously, the overtime goal. Again, let's start it. I didn't unfortunately get to go to the game, but I know lots of people that did. And it was just kind of like a, a pinnacle for hockey. And I think that was a point where I was kind of at a crossroads between hockey and basketball playing in high school. Like I didn't really know which one to choose because I was better at basketball than I was at hockey, but I liked hockey more than I did basketball. And I think that 2010 Olympics was just like, yeah, hockey. And then 2011 went the Canucks won the Stanley Cup final. Like that was really cool too. So I think those two moments watching wise was definitely kind of the turning point. And I think playing wise, Probably my last season, um, we went to the championship game in our league or whatever. It was like house hockey. So, like, it didn't mean anything, this championship or whatever. It was just like a 
end of the year kind of tournament. No one really tried or anything. But for me, it was kind of cool because it's like, oh, I've never won anything. So this is kind of cool. So I started in the final game and I pitched a shutout. <laughs> so that was really cool. Highlight of my playing career. And then I retired after that. Retire on top, right? Uh, but yeah, that, that was probably the turning point for me playing wise. Out of all the people that I look up to, um, probably like Ron McLean. Uh, he's just like the, the best storyteller out of all the other guys out there, I find. Like he's just so good at, um, I think just storytelling, like honestly, like that's what separates the really good ones from the good ones. The guys that can just storytell and just tell it to you like it is, right? Like I watch Rogers Hometown Hockey and they'll be in like some small town in the prairies I've never heard of. And they'll be talking about some guy and it'll feel like I know that guy, just the way Ron McLean tells it. Um, I think broadcasting wise, definitely Ron McLean, play by play wise, uh, Jim Robson was really cool. He used to do the Canucks for forever until the late 90s, early 2000s. But there is going to be that seventh game. We'll hope they can patch Linden up and get him in that one. He will play. You know he'll play. He'll play on crutches. He will play, and he'll play at Madison Square Garden. On Tuesday night, the game is over. I just love this enthusiasm. I love John Shorthouse, too. He's another really good guy. I, I love watching him. Burroughs hustles after the puck. Works it free to Edler. Now knocked down by high stick. The flex back to BX. He shoots. He scores. Kevin BX. 10-18 into overtime. The double overtime goal. And the Canucks, for the third time in their history, will play for the Stanley Cup. All the other guys, I don't really, like, look up to, but I but I like to model myself after them. So like Gord Miller, who used to call hockey on TSN, super fast paced. I love that guy. Time against his boyhood team, the Montreal Canadiens, and Crosby can win it. Crosby scores! <laughs> Welcome to the Crosby Show, Canada. My style like fit his style because I just like naturally talk really quick. Um, but definitely like Ron McLean is definitely the guy I look up to. <laughs> Put me on the spot. That's kind of like been a ch that answer that's like changed all the time. But I think out of all my favorite players, probably Team Musolani, um, for a couple of reasons. One, our birthday is one day apart. <laughs> uh, but as a kid, I, I, I read like a lot of – I was a nerd as a kid about hockey. Like I'd challenge my teammates to trivia and I'd destroy them. Like I don't mean to brag. That was just the truth. I was just like the nerd when it came to hockey. I watched like every DVD, every CD, read every single book. Like at the Cloverdale Library, I just like was there all the time. And Timu Solani was a player I liked because I, I saw the CD once – and so this was in 1992, or the 1992-1993 season, his rookie season in the NHL with the Winnipeg Jets. And he broke Mike Bossy's rookie goal-scoring record with his 53rd goal. And he threw his glove up in the air, and he kind of did the snipe thing. And I thought that was so cool. And I was like, man, like, this is my favorite player. And then I, like, rented out Timu Solani books, read all everything online about him. Um, and I just really watched him closely. And so in 2007, when the Canucks got eliminated by the Ducks in the uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs, obviously I was sad, but I was kind of happy because I'm like, Solani's still in it. And then when they won the Cup, like, I was obviously sad because Ottawa didn't win it, but it didn't matter too much because, like, Solani won the Cup. And that was one of the coolest things. And so he got inducted into the Hall of Fame recently, and I thought it was one of the coolest things. Um, I've liked a lot of other players. Roberto Luongo is one of my all-time favorite players. Uh, but definitely Timu Solani has to be my favorite, the finish flash. Probably, like, Roberto Luongo, honestly, like... Or any, any Canuck from that 2011 team. Uh, but I think Luongo would be just such a cool dude to talk to. Um, so he just looks super low-key, down-to-earth. Um, I've met some really good NHL players. I met Carey Price once. It just wasn't the same. Not, not a knock on Carey. Like it, I, it's not that I think he's a, he's a great guy, but it wasn't the same because I wasn't like such a fan, right? Like I respect Carey Price. I think he's one of the best goalies. But Luongo was like like my idol. As a goalie, Like I love Luongo. I, I like played a, as... I just pretended I was Luongo all the time, right? And so I think if, like, Luongo walked in, I would just, like, drop everything and be like, oh, I, I, I just, like, stutter, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, like, Luongo would definitely be the guy that I would just want to meet really bad. I think I just loved how silly the goalies looked <laughs> when I first started watching hockey. Like, Alex Aldo was the goalie, that the first goalie I ever watched. And he's this big six foot six monster in net. And his goalie mask was so cool. He had like the orca mask where it had like the teeth around the cage. It was so cool. And I was like, man, like that looks so cool. And what really like 
kind of drew me to goaltending was like how Alex Ald played. So most goalies, when the defensemen have the puck at the point, the goalies will shuffle. So like shuffle across. What he would do is he'd like go down on one knee and like slide across the crease. And I, I, I look, it looks so silly. I'm like, what the, what's this guy doing? He's like sliding on his knees. Like, so that was kind of like, I could do that. <laughs> and then one day I just like every time in elementary school, like we played hockey and I w- I'd always go in net. And I like play so hard and I compete really hard and I try to stop everything. If someone scored, I would just like, you know, throw a fit or something. Um, at public skates, whenever like hockey broke out, I'd always go in net. Street hockey, I always play goalie. Um, and yeah, I thought it was just the coolest position. So I just really wanted to be a goalie really bad. Um, and I'm really happy that I got to play four seasons. Well, I do a lot uh, in terms of hobbies. Um, I guess my, a lot of people don't really know about me is that I'm a musician. So I play a lot of different instruments. Uh, as a kid, I played the Indian drum called the dol. I played that as a kid. Um, but nowadays I play electric guitar, I play acoustic guitar, I play bass, I play drums and I sing, and I also produce my own music. So I guess like that's something that, m- that not everyone might know about me. Like I do have it out there, like on my Facebook page and everything, but I think the people that know me as a broadcaster don't know that I love music and that I play a bunch of different instruments. Animals? <laughs> uh, I like squirrels and rabbits. And it's like super, it's, this, it's like a, this is like a really like set answer. Cause it's like, I just love those two animals in particular. Um, I used to live in this rancher that had a huge yard. So I'd see squirrels and rabbits all day. And I was just so fascinated by how like silly and ditzy squirrels were. And I thought they were so cute. Like they look like little mice with massive tails. And I just thought they were so cool. And so like, I'd, wa- I'd literally be entertained by watching a squirrel for like 10 minutes, just do its thing, go back up into a tree or something. And so like squirrels were like my favorite animal. And then I started watching rabbits a lot, like wild jack rabbits, like cottontail rabbits. Um, Cause they're so cute. Like they're just the most like cute animal that I've ever seen. Like I love dogs and everything, but like, I just think like cottontail, like wild rabbits are just like one of the cutest animals I've ever seen. So like rabbits and squirrels, as weird of an answer that is, it has like a personal connection because I used to live in that house where they're ha- they were all over the place. I've never had the chance to pet one because they always run for me. <laughs> but yeah, squirrels and rabbits.